Hi, it's Amélie. Today we're going to do a just practicing of a Poulenc Sonata. Um, we're going to do that with the Tomplay app. So Tomplay is an app that um, uh, you can use to play with the piano part or orchest orchestral part of the pieces you're learning. Um, so you'll see on the screen how the app works. Um, when you buy the actual piece that you want to play on Tomplay, um, yeah, when you buy it, um, you get the flute part, the flute and piano together, and the piano by itself. But today we're just going to use the piano part. You can also modify the tempo here, so I can play it slower, and then let's say I play it. Oops, I'm not in the right. Oh, what happened? I well, get to move it up. Hmm. Well, can you do it? Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. I think that sound might be a bit loud sure. in okay. my ears, but we'll see. You can turn it down on your computer. Okay. With the, with the thing at the top corner. The speakers, the button on the keyboard. And yeah. the speaker button. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. If you have any question during the live stream, uh, you can leave them in the live chat and I'll answer them right away, uh, especially if they're related to that piece. If you have questions about other things, uh, flute related, I will probably answer them more at the end of the, of the live stream. So yeah, I'm just going to play a few notes because I didn't really play yet. the real tempo 84 yeah so I'm gonna try it that like that and I'll see how it goes oh I did it again it starts at 39 like we oh, bring weird. it back to the beginning oh it didn't tap oh yeah that's probably why I got gotcha. you because we have to tap <laughs> So you tapped now? Yeah, you're all good now. Okay, good. Oh. I think they gave you a delay. I think you can add the delay. Okay. You got an extra beat in the metronome. Oh, wow. How many extra beats did they give you? Hold on. <laughs> One second. You go here. Yeah, no count off. You want less count off. There you go. You want a piano kind of by there? Yeah, I'd like to have the piano. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Usually it's we Sunday get it morning. right away. Sunday yeah. morning. too low the piano yeah, yeah I'll do it
my flute. Just it's kind of. There. Yeah, I'm gonna check. <coughs> but I don't think my tuner is gonna be able to tell me at what pitch there. Tuning fork, I think. Are they at 442? I think they are. Well, okay. Maybe I was. I don't know. I'm a bit uh, <laughs> sleepy still. Okay. Just gonna check something. The tuner. You know, you start on a high E, sometimes it might be difficult. Uh, if you have difficulties with it, maybe you um, lift your pinky of the right hand, might help. Um, and uh, yeah, I think sometimes some people get a bit nervous about it and they overthink that thing and they start doing like. <laughs> it's not really the rhythm that's written there, it's really. And personally, I think it's better if it's just. You know, like this um, this um, scarf, or you know that you you just throw away. You know, because he's kind of a, don a dandy, a dandy, a, a guy with who uh, goes out and is well dressed and goes and it's that type of attitude, I think. And if w uh, you know that 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 comes back a lot, the so if at one point you want to do one or two that you make the first note a bit longer, uh, it can be interesting. Uh, but if you do it all the time, I think it, it becomes more like a, a tick, like a nervous tick type of thing. You're just like, you don't really understand the rhythm. That's how I feel about it. Uh, so I guess, yeah, if, if one of them you decide, let's say uh, just before two, it's forte and you wanna make it a bit more, uh, you wanna make the first note a bit longer, Maybe there it would be more appropriate, I think, because I hear that a lot in people that play it. The da 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 da, and I don't, I don't know. That's not how I see it, but you know, you can see it the way you want. Um, is there is there any questions yet? Uh, just uh, no. People are just saying stuff like, some people, yeah, it sounds faster than they remember, but yeah, it's yeah, a hard I'll piece to it keep. It's a hard piece to keep in tempo, fast. you know. Yeah, plus when you play with someone in reality, you kind yeah. of play with each other you help you, like, right. you yeah. listen to each other but um it's a good way to practice mm -hmm. but i'll put it just a bit slower at 76 for now oh i forgot to press the thing you have to tap yeah where yeah i is. know i know <laughs> <laughs> i know and yet i don't do it <laughs>
like it's down here. I always doubt. So just before five, sometimes I write one note so I don't have to doubt and I practice because I played that a long time ago. I would say it's easier if you do daga than taka. It's a bit faster for me because it's a bit closer to each other. Like taka, it's more really in the front and in the back. Taka, taka, ta, and then daga, you bring it a bit closer to each other, I think. <coughs> when I learned that when I was young, um, my double tonguing was not fast enough and I would get tired. So at one point, I took um, tafanet and gubar. Uh, a G, uh, EJ4 and I went through the whole thing doubling every note so I started like I didn't start at that speed of course I was not and it it, it, it happened you know it's just a um, question of practice and then it's gonna get there but doubling every note um, for me, it, it uh, worked. You can also work um, upside down, so gada, 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 and then when you go and do taka, it, it gets easier. Um, and if you have problems with it, you can also use just that part as a, as a technical exercise that every time you take your flute and you're warming up, you can use that as a warm up for your uh, double tonguing. Okay, I will start from four. Going to tap. <laughs> I will tap. <laughs> uh, okay, there's no letters here. So 31. Thir okay. Okay, here. I'll start here. Oh, no. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how many claps there are. One, two, I think. Is this in two? because you're gonna have a G flat just after and high G flat if you put your thumb there they don't uh, that's what happens so you'll have to do the the G flat here or here I think this one is better for for this particular spot something is a bit uh, let's say here I wanted to work on the dynamics I stopped the articulation and I just did it slurred and I was just focusing on the dynamics then I added the articulation because for me if um, there's too much at once um, it's it takes me more time then if I just um, identify what I want to improve and um, just work on that specific aspect without the rest and then once I'm happy with the result I can add the other aspects. 
Um, I'll do it just one more time. pitched a bit differently but that's uh but it yeah. depends on depends it depends yeah it just depends yeah that's that's weird yeah sometimes like oh like my a there was low yeah funny huh yeah huh. maybe my flute uh, has a well there you are you see you're aware that's happening you know it's all about awareness yeah i guess or maybe i'm just not warmed up so i'm oh. kind of playing it all over the place i don't know um i'm gonna do 52 Oh. Somebody has a question. Hmm? Somebody has a question. Uh, Juliana Diaz wants to know: Do you have any tips on the part of the double staccato to make it sound more natural and fluent, or double tonguing? He she meant. Yeah. Okay. So what I think is uh, to really support the air. You need a lot of because you you see your tongue is coming and just um, stopping the air, but the air still has to go on the next note. So you need a lot of pressure there. I think if you have pressure, it's going to be better. You see, when I was doing that piano, I was thinking pressure, 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 because uh, if I don't put enough pressure, then some of those high notes crack. So I think that would be the main thing. And then, you know, training your tongue to be able to go with ease. But that's that's uh, the second part of, of it. So you should try that, playing it with a lot of air pressure and tell me how you feel. Air pressure is not just the air uh, amount of air because you want to play piano there. So you don't want to put too much air, but you want to have the right speed. Maybe you, you um, close the lips a bit more. So um, it's a bit like uh, when you play with a water hose in the, in the summer and you have a lot of water and so that water is getting to uh, your stand, let's say. And then someone uh, lowers the amount of water so you want to play piano but then the water doesn't get to the same spot so what you do is that you put your thumb on the hole and then you get the same pressure again uh, you get the same distance so that's kind of what you're doing with your flute you put a little bit less air but you're going to close a little bit more the lips make it a smaller a smaller hole and uh, but you need the same you need to have some pressure and what i notice in my students is that when the pressure is not put in the right spot, which is the abdominals, the area where you, you push the air out, um, I see, I see uh, tensions in the face or in the shoulders or at, uh, in other places in the body. But when we focus on putting the pressure in the right spot, usually those tensions go away. Um, so yeah, is that a okay answer? Yeah, I hope it helps. So I'm gonna go from just uh, 52. That's not that easy. The, the, the pinky of the left hand on it and it um, makes it more open. You show it again? The A at, seven, uh, at 
65. Because you just played a forte with me and now you're playing a piano, maybe it, it would be helpful to put the thing to there. Um, also, in that piece, sometimes you have um, high notes that are forte. And as flutists, sometimes we have a tendency to want to play all those high notes, piano. Maybe it's a show-off thing because it's difficult, but um, sometimes you just have to open the, the valves and blow and play loud in the high register, like a singer who uh, who's going, you know, opera singers that go, They don't, they don't hold it to show that they can do a piano uh, soft, you know. Um, it has to be musical more than trying to show skills, I think. And it, it is a skill also to be able to play a nice forte in the high register. Um, I'm going to go from 50 to... Not maybe here. change the color at um, 78 because um, we have that uh, F major feel and then you have the A flat that makes it sound you know you're here I don't know it's like a reminiscence of um, You're in that happy place, but then you have that uh, thought of, I don't know, someone you love who's not there, or I, that's how I, I perceive that little part. Um, yeah, that was just that. I can continue. <laughs> things for tempo well it yeah, changes maybe, maybe. I, don't I don't know, know. What i have no idea what Or their system could be pitch. i don't i don't know um yeah. so yeah you have that subito piano on a g sharp on a g a high g it's a If I put my my pinky on the on on the C instead of on the E flat, ever to play the piano. Play both. That's good. The no, first one sounds better. Okay, so I'll just keep it where it should, it should be. I'm just singing in my flute. 
and straight open my throat a bit to get a better sound. Okay, so one thing I have to do is make sure I keep it forte until the end of that F sharp. So I'll write forte here and I'll make a line. So I make sure that it's going to be easier to make a difference between that. You know, let's say I, I let's say I go decrescendo at 89, then there's no subito at, at 90. So I have to make sure I keep the dynamic until the end. So. but you have to push a lot just to keep it uh did you hear a difference not that much huh So what are some tips about playing high playing piano in the high register? Um, as I said before, you um, make the aperture smaller and um, you put less air, but you put a lot of air pressure. You have to really support. When I play loud, I feel that I just open everything and let it out. When I play soft, I put way less quantity, but I have to push more to make sure it's really supported. So that's that's the feeling of it. Yeah, I'm not very happy with that one. That was a good one. <coughs> okay, so I did a peu attack here. You know, instead of going sa or I just go. So my lips are closed, and I I open them a little bit. thing with resetting after a rest like that you have to reset something you just did that was very you know melodic and then you have to stop and then reset yeah. and then go back and then do something super high i think that's why the pro yeah. will be good there right because it helps to reset that sure exactly yeah. i'm gonna try to put that in in the context so i'm gonna go from somewhere around 80.
Yeah, when you go down those lines too, it's um, let's say 103. I think we have to pay a specific attention there because it's going down, so we can have a tendency to stop supporting the air and go like this. flattened so it's going down but it still needs that um, that push maybe you can either maybe imagine it going up if, if it helps you or just um, think that those notes are glued together or it's an elastic that you're holding So is there any question about No, it? everyone thought that you answered a lot of their questions already. You want to go to the second? Yeah, I'm not going to do it uh, tempo because okay. uh, uh, it's just practicing. Yeah. Yeah. So That's it. if I do all that, it's going to take a while before yeah, yeah, yeah. I get tired. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So we're going to go and do the second one now. Sure. I'll go to that. Um, yeah, that's a beautiful movement, the second movement. Mm. And... Um, hmm. Yeah, it's got some, I think that piece, it's an interesting thing to find a story to it for yourself. Um, images, anything that inspires you, um, especially in the second movement, um, it's very legato. Uh, there's a lot of piano, there's some, there's some interesting dynamics. Um, but I think that legato is so impo important, you know, like hear the oh i forgot something in the other movement oh. and i even forgot to do it and you know when you get that high f where is it where is it 
I don't know now what we're doing. Oh, I guess not there. Oh yeah. Um. Isn't that? You know you can do the F. Uh, let's try this. play fast enough I get the... but I thought here there was a high F at piano and hmm. okay I'm not sure it doesn't matter okay so here I'll try it um, so yeah for me, this is kind of a depressed state, <laughs> and sometimes, but it's a bit uh, melancholic, so it's like you're sad, but thinking of something happy from the past, that's how I see it, and sometimes around 3 at, uh, well, 26, so that there's some anger coming back, you know, why did I lose that, that's how I feel about that piece, and it goes, it goes, uh, in different directions emotionally uh, well people can put their comments about that and if you have questions I'll be happy to answer them so I'm gonna try this there's a flute mm, yes there is that's why right here and then we got that it right away but I don't remember what it was <coughs> and then here it's a G and I had a hesitation so I'm writing it down so no more hesitation uh, I'm just gonna try that
have any tips on uh, avoiding the pitch going down at the last moment of a long note? Yeah, so you have to make sure you're still pushing enough air. And also, at the very end, I send the air a little bit higher just before I, I, I stop blowing. So, let's see. Um, higher at the end of the of the phrase so yeah there's that that's pretty much it yeah i'm gonna do it again from so you see i try to do dynamics and i try not to um let's say at 15 i have a mezzo forte at 15 i'm gonna show it here on the music uh, uh so we have mezzo forte at 15 so we go here loud you know because it's it's been piano since the beginning mm. but let's say I do a decrescendo at 16 because it's kind of tempting then I do I kind of lose the aspect of echo there and the aspect of surprise but if I do 16 I stay, I keep my dynamic until the end. I think it's more interesting. I think that there's a reason why he wrote it like that. It's because it's more interesting. So those little things, you know, be careful with those little things to, um, if there's a surprise, you don't want to call the auditors and say, "Oh, I'm gonna give you a, make you a surprise in two bars." That's not a surprise <laughs> anymore. So yeah, just those little things. Um, yeah, I'll go from 19 now. Here, but I'll just take one bar before because it's easier. <laughs> interesting to do it. Yeah, it gives it some shape. So that's 26. I'll do it from there. So here it's like, here it's kind of, um, I feel um, revolt against life, you know. There was this melancholy and now it's like, but why? It's unfair, all those things. That's my image of it, you know, you make your, you can make your own, it's just that.
you say do a nasal sound like nya 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 and make it sound in your nose Interesting like that. Um, I'll go from 40 because I'm kind of used to the bar. I'll take one bar before. Interesting thing. Okay, at um, 47, I think it's interesting to do kind of uh, give it an accent and then start trill. The start the trill. If you do, it's also interesting, but I prefer. Hmm. And you keep it loud. Yeah. I'm not sure anymore. You see, that's the whole thing. You decide something, then maybe another day you feel it different, and then you can play it differently too. Um, then there's this piano. Yeah, I think it's easier to play the piano if you put your pinky on the on the C. important to do that little um, rest it's like yeah that's how I visualize it one is down and one is up um, so I'm gonna go from 48 note I think I'm not gonna sing it I'm just gonna go oh. um, I think I'm also not gonna vibrate it I want it very transparent so vibrato would be in the way of that and I don't think it's necessary to vibrate every note there you can choose notes but don't vibrate all of them Mandy wants to know, uh, Mandy4963 uh, wants to know, um, how can you legato the higher notes without making any accent or too much air or make it like too airy, I guess? Um, support again, I think, and a very little opening. And um, 
Mm. It's difficult because I don't know exactly what that person does, you know, right. they don't see you. Um, if there's accents, there's probably, the air stream is probably not um, uh, always equal. There's probably some changes in the airspeed or in the, um, in the airflow if there's accents. So I would be careful with that. And I would keep a mask, you know, also with my lips. The embouchure, there's no need for big movement there. It has to be stable. So I guess stability in general, stability in the air pressure, stability in the, in the lip position, and also just listening carefully. And you know, there's this whole thing about, okay, do you wanna, how would I say that? When you practice and it's not the way you want it, you can judge yourself and start being insecure. And uh, see how it goes like that. And you can try to take a step back and just observe what's going on and think, I know my body can do that. I'm gonna just play a little bit and see how it goes and observe what's going on. And then try to observe when it doesn't go well, what's going on in my body. And when it does go well, what's going on. But instead of um, your conscious self trying to be in control so much, maybe just your conscious self trying to observe how your body does things and uh, gently guide your body. Um, because when we want to control very much, we tend to tense things up and then it usually gets worse. Like, let's say today when I took my flute, I wasn't very happy with my sound because I hadn't uh, warmed up and I had the intonation and I was like, what's going on with my intonation? And at first, my first reflex, my controlling self was like, do something about this, fix it. Oh no, you can't play in tune anymore. I'm like, come on, I can play in tune. I've played in tune before. Relax, play a little bit and you're gonna find your spot, you know? Uh, and just that controlling self, take a step back and observe what's going on and you'll figure it out. But I think that mindset of um, observing and not judging, just seeing how things are going is a very good tool to, mm. to progress. Yeah, she's saying, uh, she thinks it's her lips, they're tense, yeah. Okay. Okay. So maybe it's your lip position in general. Maybe you're smiling. A lot of people yeah. who have tension, they're smiling. Oh yeah, your, your latest video about clean, uh, playing with a clean sound. You talk about that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But I, yes, and I see it in people, the smiling thing in the high register, because I think it, it kind of helps in the beginning when you play high notes, because it, um, it gives you an angle, but then it, you, you don't have that much, yeah. It's kind of a thing that you do in the beginning might help. And then at one point it kind of keeps you from getting better. Mm. So if you're smiling, I don't know if you are, check in the mirror. If you are, maybe to counteract that, you can do this. It's like, a, I call them lip push-ups or, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, to work those muscles that are um, the opposite, uh, op opposite muscles. Mm. And then even go like this and then what I do also sometimes in a, is I, I ask a student to play a low G. And then I say, don't move anything and play a, your high F with mm. the same, same embouchure, nothing different. You know? Because mm. we mm. overthink things and mm. we overwork and we think, oh no, this high F, I can't play it. And then some muscles that have nothing to do with playing that high F, um, get into action and get in the way of our body just doing what it can do mm. easily. Mm. So sometimes we just get in the way of things mm. with our brains <laughs> instead <laughs> of just letting things uh, go. But it's a whole thing to, it's mm. a, it's, you have to experience it, I guess. So. Uh, Rima, she wants to know, uh, she has trouble accenting mid-range notes without cracking them. <laughs> do you have any tips on that? Okay. Maybe your lips are too tight. Yeah. That could be it. That could be it. So try to open and try to open inside the mouth as well. So some people will say, uh, open between your teeth. 
Some people visualize it like that. So you just open the key in the back. Uh. Uh, some people, what they will do is, uh, for me, I don't think about my teeth. I think about the back of my mouth and making a big cavity, you know, or saying the oh, 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 the sound oh. Mm -hmm. Because that's the most open sound. Oh, oh, oh is not even as like oh. Yeah. Oh is the best sound for opening a lot. And using vowels, I use that a lot. So if I want to say louder, I go oh, and then I can change to oh, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. you know, I change yeah. to different sounds. Do you think uh, sometimes I think this, the sensation of my lips being puffed out, but not the actual puffing out like state, but the the feeling of the inside being puffed out? Oh, you not your lips, your cheeks. Your cheeks, I mean, yeah, cheeks, yeah. Yeah, just a little it bit. Depends on then the adding words. those AEIOUs. Yeah, yeah. Like it depends. It depends, I right? It's just a different vowels, visualization. Yeah. It's a different visualization. For some people, it's really, really, um, like you say, open teeth your thing. teeth and. Yeah, yeah the teeth thing is amazing. Lips. That's really yeah. cool, too. That works out for a lot of people. Yeah, because maybe it's easier to feel it than yeah. the vowels for. I don't know. Want to do number three? Yeah. Okay. So maybe try that. Try to open more and um, open. The lips and mm. keep it keep it just neutral the lips the lips don't work as much as most people think they do mm -hmm. they're just guiding the air they're not actually uh, they don't have to do m big modifications mm -hmm. it's very tiny mm. okay that I never really uh, played it like in concert or anything I just uh, so I'll do my best It's still loading. Mm -hmm. Sounds like an effect, really. You know what I mean? Sounds like a flourish. Yeah, but yeah. you still have to be able to do it. Right, right, right. No, but just how, how it sounds, it's really cool. I'll just go a little bit slower. Yeah. Sorry. There is only. What? Because you would like just piano. Yes, I would. Indeed. Okay, I'll try to do this right now. slowly are you doing it at the same time as i am yeah okay, just do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm going to lower the tempo because the tempo was back to normal um okay i see yeah
here in my E F sharp trill. I know. Oh. Nice. Uh -huh. Okay, so the rest I think it's just a question of uh, practicing to make it easy, you know, because now it's not easy, but it's not that bad. Yeah. There's only like two things I thought, like just little tiny. That's yeah, what just yeah. practicing is all about. <laughs> Yeah, but of course, like if I was playing that in concert, I would uh, take a few weeks ahead of time so my brain has time to uh, really learn it so it gets easy and I would play it once in a while, you know, because it's not, you can't learn and feel very, very comfortable in something like that, that pretty fast and everything. For me, I need a, a little bit of time. I, it's not just hours, it's spread out time. So if I put eight hours in the same day or if I put 30 minutes a, a day for a few weeks it's uh, I might even need less time yeah, yeah. but more spread out mm -hmm. for my brain to because when you take a walk sleep all those things your brain is still doing its its thing but it can't do it if you try to just cram things in there uh, all at once um, I have a couple questions yeah. here for you how old were you when you started to play the flute I think you started at 11 huh? yeah I was 11 and who taught you? You've had several teachers. Yeah. yeah. My first teacher, I uh, was very lucky. He was very good. He was playing in uh, one of the major orchestras here in, uh, in Montreal. Mm -hmm. And uh, super nice. Yeah. And um, then uh, his name was Eric Lefebvre. And then I had in Cégep, I was studying with Sylvie Ouellet, which was also amazing. And mm -hmm. then I went to University oh, of Montreal. Yeah. And uh, then I went to take private lessons with mm -hmm. uh, another teacher. It's always good to take different private lessons with different people. Yeah, because after my bachelor's, I didn't know uh, who I wanted to do my master's with. So I just took private lessons for a full year. Sure. And then I did my master's and I did a lot of contemporary music mm -hmm. at that time. And I also did a lot of all those uh, festivals and uh, master classes and... Yeah. Well, that was just a quickly segue to that uh, you have an online studio as well. <laughs> yeah, I have an online studio. And so I people can have lessons. I, all you guys listening, you guys can email yeah. us. <laughs> so we give lessons online through, uh, I give lessons online through Skype yeah. or other than other whatever other video platforms. Platform. It doesn't really matter. <coughs> it works very well um, as long as you have a good light and an okay microphone. And a good internet connection, yeah. Yeah. And then it's all good. Yeah, and pretty much. At first, I thought it would be different. It, it is different, but I thought it would be, uh, it wouldn't be as good as in person because right. I can't touch the person. Or, but really, quite the uh, contrary. It's pretty good. Yeah. Plus, I really see when we teach in person. Sometimes I'm on the side. Sometimes, mm -hmm. but there I I see yeah, the exactly. Uh, yeah. I see well, and yeah. my students are progressing and are very happy so yeah. it, it works totally fine. yeah you can check that out at the the flute channel.com website yeah uh i have something you know in the beginning when you have <laughs> what i do is i think of an accent on that d because it's on the b but it sounds like an upbeat you don't want it to sound like an upbeat so give it an accent i i would say that was clear yeah, but we're yeah. just trying to find that part. Oh, it's the very, very beginning. So okay. people have the music at home. Yeah. So you have a... Yeah, let's wait. Almost there. <laughs> huh, it's around there. It's uh, yeah, yeah okay. like bar six there. There it is. You see that D, F sharp, E. So it sounds like an upbeat going to an E, but in reality it's the opposite. So if you put an accent on the on the D, then it will help. So that's how I I see it. So um, maybe I continue to yeah, where okay. I was. Yeah. I was at one o four. Okay. Um, I'm gonna check. thumb for the A sharp, uh, the A sharp. Here you have 
to be very um, at uh, one thirteen or something. We have to be um, stable with the flute because those fingerings make the flute move a little bit, and then the sound uh, you get a sound problem. And you might think it's the embouchure, you might think it's your air, but in reality, it's just your flute moving around. And that's something we didn't discuss today. But when people were asking questions, because I don't see you, so sometimes I don't think of it, but it might also be your flute that's moving around. You have to make sure you can hold your flute like this without using your fingers. The fingers don't hold the flute, the fingers are busy playing. So only the thumb, only the fulcrum points hold the flute. Uh, so I'm gonna go from, yeah, from there it's fine. <laughs> fingers close <coughs> if you try to lift them too much you use more time obviously so yeah sometimes I try to use a rotation like this so my fingers are not working that hard it's just the arm is assisting the fingers yeah so we should do a video on that that's so interesting you can't actually see my arm moving. No. It's very, it's like inside there's some muscles. It's super slight, it's yeah. It's a slight movement. Yeah. But you start by doing this just to, to uh, activate it and feeling it. And then... Because um, this way, the fingers don't work as hard going up and down. You hurt yourself less. You're a bit, it's a bit faster. It's a bit more um, um, always... You know, uh, when it's always uh, good, mm -hmm. you get more uh, consistency. Consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can do that movement very fast for very long and your muscles won't get tired. Mm -hmm. That's pretty interesting mm -hmm. how fast you can go doing this. Yeah, for minutes, That's, hours. Yeah. If you just do one finger like this, I feel it here pretty fast. It's a lot of energy there, but there yeah. it's way less there energy. It's you less can energy. feel it. It's so obvious. Yeah. It's like you do that, you can feel more stuff. But here it's way yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's pretty interesting some pianists use that uh, that type of rotation and when I uh, learned that in a piano master class I thought oh I'm gonna try with my flute and uh, it totally worked it's great okay so I'm gonna go from 167 now N any question about it no flute? everyone loves it everyone thinks you're doing great yeah somebody wants you to make a video about how to play tuplets or stuff like tuplets. that tuplets you know like Quintuplets, yeah, quintuplets, triplets. septuplets, you okay. know, stuff like that. I, yeah. I have to make videos about rhythm. Yeah. Uh, I'll do it again. I'm not happy because I, okay, because I didn't keep it loud until the end. Mm -hmm.
So. Yeah, let's even do it again. It sounded great. When you play uh, in real life with the app, it doesn't do that. No, 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 I know. Just yeah, yeah. We're, we're streaming it. We're streaming so we're, it. So, so don't worry. If you play <laughs> with the app, you can play the whole piece. Yeah, it's it. fluid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You won't get bothered like that. Yeah, yeah. So I go from there, I guess. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because I, I was happy with the dynamics there. Yeah. And again, it's the same thing. Keep the, the fourth simo until the very end so that when the piano comes in, pianissimo, mm -hmm. it's oh, something, you know, you'll yeah, get a cool. way better emotion like that. And then melancholic again. And uh, yeah, from there. <laughs> piano than that sorry okay I'll do it again because I had problems counting um, yeah the dynamics were better there so you see it's very progressive and the piano goes in a crescendo as well. It's not gonna sound. Oh yeah, you can leave your um. You see when you do that, if you want, you can leave your index finger from the D flat when you do the D sharp, and it totally works. No, how did I do the other day? Oh yeah, you put it here on that little spatula, so you can do this. fingers moving. Mm -hmm. I just forgot to do it because the other day I looked at it for a bit and I thought, oh, how can I make this easier? Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Way easier. Um, from 219 because I was not happy with that to give an accent on the first of each beat and here I can nye, nye, nye.
because there's some piano stuff going on. I'll do from there. I didn't give enough time to put my flute up. That's why it's tough, because when they change line like that, and uh -huh. you don't have time to see what's coming. Uh -huh. uh, well, 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 I'll go from there, and I'll do yeah, so I'll do this. Uh -huh. My E was out of tune with the A. the mouth for that E flat to not uh, when you go <laughs> or if not the E flat tends to crack I think so like oh or you can think about the T thing we were talking about before mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you have any final questions, we'll just uh, do our little final talk. But if you have any questions about uh, anything about the flute, just let us know. We'll answer a couple of them before the show's over. But uh, yeah, you, how about you talk about, uh, like I said, the studio and we have a uh, Patreon. And yeah, we have a Patreon if you want to help us out. Um, yeah, you can go to patreon.com slash the flute channel. That's where you can help us monetarily, uh, directly, in fact. Uh, you can pay as little as $1 a month or $2 or $10 a month if you want. And that helps us out directly to make more content uh go out and play concerts sometimes maybe if we have enough money and all those types of things and go out and do stuff and do more things here on the channel yeah. and so that's patreon.com slash the flute channel and then we have private <coughs> lessons yeah there's Skype. a private lesson studio a studio so that's uh yeah, we're, yeah. email us at yeah. yeah at info at the flute channel com, and this gives you the opportunity to have lessons with Emily directly and you can have w a single hour lesson or you can have a package lesson of a couple lessons. Uh, you can do half hour or one hour, uh, whatever works for you. And uh, yeah, so you can check that out on uh, at email us at info at the flute channel dot com or go to our website, uh, the flute channel dot com and you'll see a, a little icon talking about online lessons and stuff like that. Uh, and you take anybody, uh, anybody from beginner to advanced. Uh, if you have uh, an excerpt you want to play for Emily and she can give you some tips, that's cool. If you just picked up your flute uh, yesterday at the store. Uh, you can uh, come and have lessons with Emily. And she'll help you uh, make some goals and all those wonderful yeah. things and make you progress. And you can also if you're, work on yeah. aspects like uh, high register. Absolutely. Or anything that. Yeah. You and we also work yeah on. exactly. And we also have uh, a deal with uh, the Flute Center of New York, which is uh, flutes for the number four sale dot com. If you're looking for a flute, and I think Emily can tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so if you use our code TFT when you buy a flute with the Flute Center of New York, um, either by phone or by uh, on the internet, uh, they will give you an extended warranty of twelve of eighteen months 18, yeah. instead of twelve. Uh -huh. You can try between three and four flutes for yeah. ten days. Yeah, and you can try them for longer. I think. Yeah, ten well. days is the they ship. Yeah, usually it's a week, I think, and then yeah. they give you three extra days. And also shipping is free. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. that's right. And uh, some, this, some yeah. people actually bought flutes. Oh, several. Oh, my gosh. So and many. We thank you. Yeah. Uh, because that helps us as well. Yeah. It's and a good way to help totally. us. Totally. From and all over uh, the world, mind you, too. This deal is for anybody all over the world. So you can call them or go on their website. They're all flutists there. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> They're all professional flutists working there. Um, so there's that. Uh, also, uh, we might next summer we we have uh, an interest in doing a retreat yeah um, um yeah we want to know like, if people yeah. are interested what they would like yeah and yeah like more master class type of thing a couple of private lessons i i was thinking maybe a a little bit of both yeah type of thing it'd be it'd be a retreat so in this you know in a, in a big cottage or something like that with piano and people can go running or swim you know it's a it's gonna be a very very luxurious but also something very 
I don't know. Good. Very luxurious. No, I'm very like, luxurious. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like you get the, the lux- in in a way that it's luxury because you get to play the flute. You also get to relax. You yeah, also get to eat. And... You know, get to talk. It's really a you know, or you can just go out and you know do stuff. You know, practice as well. And practice as well. So yeah. we're gonna we be like giving out. Yeah. Because we like meeting people. Yeah, and totally. Having activities. Yeah, and, and we want it to be remote, so we want to go to different places. But we're definitely gonna give more more things more uh we're gonna be giving more information about that out soon as well and yeah yeah we, yeah, we ha- i don't think i think that's everything for now but um we have a question here uh mandy wants to know what flute are you using right now what was your first flute and how many flutes do you have okay. how many flutes do you have in all your life my first flute was a flute that the school gave me uh, I was a Yamaha, like the basic mo- model, the most basic models, and then I got a, my dad bought me a Yamaha 484. I don't know if that number still exists. It was open holes, and I think, I think it was not in silver, or maybe the head joints were silver. And then I got the food that I have here, which is a Sankyo artist. I th- does that model still exist? Thank you, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Yeah, I think it doesn't. If any uh, Prima Senkoi uh, dealers or representatives could let us know. <laughs> yeah, I got that one. And uh, I changed the head joint a few years after to a Wimberley head joint. Wimberley is a flute maker in Nova Scotia. No, New Bern- New- Yeah, uh, Nova yeah, Scotia. Nova Scotia, I think. But I don't think he makes head joints anymore, but he's a joint, I, well, I liked it, that's why I bought it. And yeah, I like I like my little mix there, it's pretty good. So, any more questions? I think that's it. Uh, somebody wants you to do a video about Schindler's List, the, the music of Schindler's List, like a just practicing for Schindler's List. Okay. Are we allowed to do that? Yeah, we are and we aren't. Like, we won't get any, 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 any money from the ads because it's uh, still in the. Uh, it's yeah, not it's in the public, public domain. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a. Uh, if we do it for educational purposes, we could do it, but there's a, uh, maybe through Patreon. Maybe we can make that a special thing through Patreon, and uh, if we have enough people who are helping us out on Patreon, maybe we can make uh, one for them privately. You know. So that could be a cool goal that because then we make money still because we won't make any money on, on YouTube. They'll instantly, you know, yeah. the algorithm and all that stuff will definitely flag our thing and we'll get no royalties, but they'll get royalties, you know. Which is fine, you know. Yeah, way. it's fine too. It's, totally. royalties. it's true, it's just... but you're also an artist and need to, to live <laughs> mm-hmm. and you're performing something that people want. So, yeah. And the uh, name of the app is TomPlay.com. You can go to TomPlay on the ios store or the app store uh the play store rather uh it's best to play it it's best to use it on a tablet or on your computer on a little phone maybe just the audio coming through might be the best for it but you can't really see the notes on your phone right so but you can get that app it's free uh but the pieces like i said if you go you purchase uh, the pieces by the piece and uh they're really great so you get different and i think you can even print yep you absolutely can that's pretty cool yeah, you can print the music as well, which is it great. It ends up being not that expensive. No, if you think that it's actually cheaper than a, a music, yeah. like a piece of music. Sometimes yeah. is because we all expensive. yeah yeah because like the Poulenc Sonata, the actual piece of music is yeah, quite expensive. Yeah, buying the the book. It's and and this well, way of course you, have you don't a, have the full piano part. No, you yeah do. yeah you have the full piano part. You get the full thing. So that's crazy. Yeah, yeah you have to buy all three movements. They're all three yeah. really separate pieces, but. But the, it's a uh, it's a great you uh, tool. Get a lot. Yeah, you get a lot, and you get to practice with it. It's not like uh, what's great about the tool is just it's, it's, it's a practice tool. It's really for the practice room. It's really for getting ensemble, all those types of little things that you wouldn't necessarily get if you were just playing by yourself with nothing, because except the flute. Like I remember in university, we had so ma- so little hours with the accompanist. It was mainly you had to. Uh, know everything like really know it before you went to the accompanist because mm-hmm. you had no time yeah and in real life as well like when we did the flute festival last summer like i played um chandinus right uh, chandinus, and we played it what three times together yeah, at before least. the concert yeah. like yeah. not that many times i mean uh so you need to know the piece then of course, when you play with a person, they don't play exactly like you're recording, so you have to adapt a little bit. Both people have to adapt to each other. It's not 
I feel it's not just the companies that have to adapt to the flutist. It's that's right. We're a team. We have to play chamber music because we we always call them accompanists. But when you play a piece like Poulenc, it's not a, an accompaniment. It's a full part by itself. It's it's chamber music. So yeah. So yeah, thanks everybody. This was a great, great, great uh, just practicing. We will have another one next week and for the next coming weeks for sure. And uh, let us know in the comments uh, what you want us to do in the future. Be sure to comment after the show's over and also like the video if you liked it. And uh, share it around and tell all your flute friends about us. <laughs> thanks for watching. Bye.